What is up guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about the Canon C500 Mark II. It's just been an amazing camera. We've been filming with it now for almost three weeks and we have a lot of great content that's coming soon. So if you guys wanna learn more about it, make sure to stick around and turn on notifications so you guys don't miss out on that. I thought it would be appropriate to do a Q&A session, especially right before our full review, which will be dropping probably in about a month from now. So we'll go ahead and kick things off with the very first question. And I do apologize in advance if I bastardize your name, because some of these are, I just don't know how to pronounce. First question, and this is from Instagram, and it's from Saurib Lahwab. I'm sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. Is it worth upgrading from the C200? Uh, for me, it was definitely worth upgrading because although I love the C200, I think it's a great camera, there were some little quirks that annoyed me, and this just kind of picks up where the C200 left off. For example, being able to add my own LUTs into the camera and being able to properly monitor what's coming from the image of the camera is amazing. Also, full frame, I know that might seem like not a big deal, but now seeing the image quality that comes from the C500, I definitely think it's worth upgrading, but I think the biggest one for me has to be 10-bit. So one thing that we've kind of concluded is that the 10-bit on this is so good that I don't even care about shooting so much in RAW. I would say that the 10-bit rivals the C200 RAW image. So just that alone in terms of file size and being able to have a faster workflow is definitely worth upgrading from the C200. I am Delvon from Instagram. Do they film with this in Hollywood movies? Well, this camera, the Canon C500 Mark II, is fairly new. It's only been out for like a month and a half. So I don't think any Hollywood movies have currently using it or are using it as of right now. However, the original Canon C500 was used in several movies. Movies like Jason Bourne, uh, The Avengers, Age of Ultron, and then also movies like, one of my favorite ones in fact, is Need for Speed, I really like that movie. And they paired that one with the Arri Alexa Mini because it was able to cut really easily with those two cameras. So it just kind of shows you the type of quality that you can get with this type of camera. So I would imagine the C500 Mark II uh, will be used in several films and also because it is Netflix approved. Yes, I made a whole video on that. If you guys did not watch it, uh, check it out. There'll be a link down below. But because it is Netflix approved, it does become a great candidate to be able to use on shows like Narcos, you know, Stranger Things and other or, you know, Netflix originals. Leo Fons Official 1985 from Instagram. Is it worth the money? So kind of what I said earlier about the C200, if it was worth upgrading, for me it is. It's definitely worth the money. I think if you can justify the cost of the camera, which is $16,000, it's definitely worth the money because there's so much that you can do with this camera, not only from a professional side, but even stuff that we do here. I know a lot of people think like this is overkill for YouTube. And to that, I could say I agree to a certain degree, but we are producing higher level type of videos. So for us, like being able to have a faster workflow, as I mentioned before, and being able to just dial things in and anything that can save us a lot of time without messing with mirrorless cameras, like built-in XLRs, like we don't need to shoot external audio. Just those little things may seem like insignificant, but they can save you a ton of time. Josh Haynes, what's up buddy? This is from Instagram, autofocus speed compared to the Canon C200. So we haven't done any side-by-side -side comparison, but just from using it on a day-to-day -day basis, I haven't really noticed a major difference between both. If anything, I would say the C500 Mark II is slightly better, but I think it's very minor. Not enough to say like, oh my gosh, this is like night and day, but overall I think it's pretty much the same. 93 Riders response from Instagram. How great is autofocus and does it work on all resolutions? Have AF in any other cinema cameras? Okay, so this is a two part question. So first one is how great is the autofocus? The autofocus on pretty much all Canon cinema lines or even just in general their, their cameras is phenomenal. They have dual pixel autofocus which works great. The other day we were filming with the boys over from DDE and we were doing some car stuff and I literally just had this, was hand holding this camera and everything was just smooth autofocus tracking. In fact, I even posted this on Twitter. You guys can check out this video file that the Ferrari is coming in hot, probably traveling about 50 miles an hour, and I was purposely hiding under this uh, hay bale just so that I can lose the car to see if maybe autofocus would hunt, but it tracked that sucker all the way through and I was hand holding the whole thing. So um, if I would have shot that with any other camera, I would have had to have an AC pulling focus. And to answer your second question, do other cameras have autofocus? As of right now, no. However, RED is coming out with a Komodo, which is supposed to have autofocus. And I know Blackmagic technically has autofocus, but it's literally useless. Eberruiz777 on Instagram. What's up, buddy? How much color correction do you have to do with this camera? 
So if you film in RAW, you have the flexibility to pick whatever gamma profile you'd like whenever you are editing in either DaVinci or also Premiere Pro. So if you shoot in RAW, you can technically output to like a wide dynamic range, which doesn't require a lot of color grading. You can just literally add contrast and saturation, and it actually looks really well. If you shoot in 10-bit, you can actually just record in a baked-in profile, which is actually what we did in this DDE shoot that we did a couple weeks ago. They didn't want anything fancy. They didn't want to color correct. They just they're more of a turn and burn type production. So what we did is we literally baked in this Rec 709 LUT that was built into the camera and it actually looked really great with just little minor corrections with probably just exposure and color. I mean, not color, but saturation. It turned out great. Steve Lian from Twitter. IBIS. So the C500 Mark II does not have IBIS. It has EIS, which is an electronic image stabilization, completely different from IBIS. IBIS, the sensor is what's moving. This is all electronic based. I'm assuming you're asking how well it works. And from my limited testing, it's worked phenomenal. So as I mentioned, we did this shoot with DDE and we were tracking cars and I posted this on Twitter. You could see I was hand holding the camera. Connor was able to get this on Instagram and it just works so well. A lot of times when using a cinema camera like this, it's best to use like an easy rig or even like something uh, like a gimbal or stabilizer to be able to get shots like this. I would feel comfortable using this handheld without any problems. And this camera is kind of, not really heavy, but it does have some heft to it. And I think that helps a lot with the EIS. So I'm glad because you don't really see this in cinema cameras, but I'm glad that the C500 Mark II does have some type of stabilization because when you pair that with any Canon lens that already has image stabilization, it works in conjunction with the EIS built into the camera. And no joke, it literally feels like this camera is on a gimbal. So if you want the most stable footage, grab a lens with IS, and this thing is rock solid. Michael J. Long from Twitter. Who is this camera for? Is it on par with Arik and can big budget productions use it? Or is it aimed at indie and doc filmmakers' commercial use? If it doesn't meet the Ari Gold standard, what is it missing? So this is multiple questions. So who is this camera for? Uh, I feel this camera is almost like a hybrid between like full-blown filmmakers and people who are just starting off and also documentary filmmakers. So as I mentioned earlier, cameras, the original C500 was used in Hollywood production. So you could definitely use this for Hollywood movies. And as, as I also said, they paired the original C500 with the Arri Alexa Mini. And the reason being is because the C500 matched the Arri Alexa Mini footage. There's even a whole video on this. I'll leave a link down below. It was actually Shane Holbutt who did this testing and it's on YouTube. You can actually see side-by-side -side testing with the C500, the original one, with the Arri Alexa Mini. And it was like almost to a T. Obviously, I'd imagine the C500 Mark II is gonna be much better. In fact, I've used the Arri Alexa Mini, and I think this is literally on par. If not in certain areas, this outshines it. However, it does show how amazing the Arri Alexa Mini is. It's like a 10-year-old camera, and it's definitely still holding up to that. I mean, let me know another 10-year-old camera that you can still use it today, and it's gonna be badass like the Arri Alexa Mini. But Hollywood aside, I do feel like the C500 Mark II is geared towards documentary filmmakers and also journalists. It's kind of one of those cameras where it just like a one size fits all. It has a lot of great features like built-in ND filters, the new EIS. It's very compact, portable, built-in XLRs. It just has all of these great features that you can use for documentary filmmaking. And as I mentioned, also Hollywood and even YouTube production. But overall, I think this camera is just a very rare breed and that's one of the reasons why I really like this camera. Sam Lucas from Twitter, if your workflow is 4K RAW, what advantages does the C500 have over the C200? The ones I can think of are full frame oversampling from 5.9K and because of the oversampling, the footage will have less perceived noise because of the smaller pixel pitch, anything else. So you're correct, the larger format of the 6K downsampling to 4K does make it a much sharper image with less noise. But also in terms of like workflow, you have these new CF Express cards that you're able to literally edit directly from it. And this was kind of the case also with the C200, but because these are much faster, you can also transfer data quicker on the computer, which is, you know, obviously useful. But one thing that I have to say in terms of like workflow is, honestly, I like the 10-bit on this. And I would almost say that it rivals the C200's RAW. So I would almost prefer to shoot 
a 10-bit on this over C200, which we're using right now, 12-bit raw. It just looks so good. The file sizes are much smaller. It's a lot more manageable, and you can really push the image like you could in RAW. Obviously, you lose the RAW controls of being able to adjust the ISO and the color balance, but even so, you could still push it. So as long as you get your exposure right and you know, you obviously you get everything else dialed in, you shouldn't have a problem. I would definitely choose 10-bit over RAW. In fact, that's what we're gonna be using now moving forward. Jeff Benjam from Instagram, what power supply do you recommend since the camera doesn't come with one? Okay, so this is kind of weird. This camera, you spend all this money, it doesn't come with a power supply, unlike the C200, which did. Um, I thought that was kind of weird, especially when you're spending all this money. But instead of getting a power supply, because I didn't really care to buy one, I just don't, will never use it, I ended, ended up getting this wooden camera battery plate. So I have the one for the C200, it works great. This is actually meant for this camera. So remember when I fried my C200, it's because I used one of those weird knock, knockoff brands. You wanna use something legit, so like, they have a whole voltage regulator, like this is not going to ruin your camera. If you're investing all this money, make sure you get something good. So I recommend the wooden camera, I like their stuff. Also, the battery backplate is interchangeable, so you can use this setup on the C200. And what I like about it on the C200 is the C200 has all of the audio controls and it also has a couple other buttons in the back. So it has this cool uh, swing plate that similar to like a map box where it swings out of the way and you're able to just access things without having to loosen up the, the rail mount here and then slide it out and that just becomes a pain. So you can just slide it out, boom, and it works really well. And then I just use an Anton Bauer V-mount battery and this alone, we did a shoot, This we did a commercial shoot the other day and no joke, two V-mount batteries lasted us over 10 hours. But here's the best part. I'm using the BPA-30 on the back of the camera. So if I take this out, it literally gives me 45 minutes that I can hot swap another V-mount. And also, the camera will let you know whenever the V-mount is low on battery. So that's something I didn't even expect, but it does do that, which is great because a lot of times the camera will start flashing. It's letting you know, change out the V-mount, but you still have 45 minutes on the BPA-30. So I honestly think this setup right here is the best if you're gonna be using it with the C500 Mark II. Connor McCaskill at Twitter. What camera do you think would pair well as a B-cam with the C500? Also, what do you like most about the C500? And P.S., your video editor is really good. All right, Connor, you could have just asked me here in person. You don't have to tweet me. But we'll start off with the three que or two questions. What camera do I think will pair well with the C500 Mark II? Honestly, I gotta say the 1DX Mark III. I think because it has that full frame sensor and also Canon Log, which you didn't have on the 1DX Mark II, um, it's gonna be a really great camera with this. I said something with the C200 or the EOS R actually, that the EOS R was the baby C200. I don't know if you guys remember when I did my review on it. I gotta say the 1DX Mark III is the baby C500. So I think if you wanna get that C500 look and that high quality image, obviously 5.5K raw, go with the 1DX Mark III. And then the second question is, what do I like most about the C500? Honestly, and I know this is gonna sound silly, but it's the full frame. And it's not like something new, it's not a novelty to me. I've shot full frame before. In fact, when I started my YouTube channel, I shot with the 1DX Mark II. But just seeing the, the image coming out of this camera and that large format, it's just so beautiful. Like, it makes me wanna shoot everything full frame. In fact, one of the things I don't do is sell lenses, and I sold my six Sigma 18 to 35 because I don't plan to shoot anything but full frame. Like, moving forward from 2020, it's full frame, or nothing, that's just that's just the way I see it. It's just so beautiful that that's my favorite feature. Now, speaking of full frame and this whole camera thing, we're doing a comparison with the C500 Mark II with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. We have this insane video coming out really soon, and also we have a 1DX Mark III versus C500, which is also going to be amazing. So make sure you turn on notifications so you do not miss out on that video. I promise you, it's gonna be killer. This video is also available in Spanish. I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in watching it. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching, and you guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.